The funnel beaker culture, also known as TRB from the German Trichter Becker Kultur, was a Neolithic society that thrived in Northern Europe, primarily in modern day Denmark, Northern Germany, Poland, and parts of the Netherlands, from around 40 to 27 centuries before the Common Era. It is named after its characteristic pottery style, funnel shaped beakers, which were often decorated with simple incised or stumped patterns. These vessels were typically made from clay and are considered one of the defining artifacts of the culture. The funnel beaker people were among the first in Northern Europe to adopt farming, growing crops like wheat and barley, and raising cattle, sheep, and pigs. They descended largely from the Neolithic farmers of Anatolia, although had a large portion of indigenous European hunter-gatherer ancestry. Despite practicing agriculture, they also continued to hunt, fish, and gather wild resources, suggesting a gradual transition from foraging to a farming society. The social structure of the funnel beaker culture appears to have been complex, with evidence of both communal cooperation and social stratification. Large megalithic tombs such as dolmens and passage graves were constructed during this period, indicating an organized society capable of large-scale projects. These tombs were often used for collective burials, suggesting that the dead were venerated as a group rather than as individuals. However, the presence of grave goods like pottery, stone tools, and sometimes animal remains in these burial sites suggests that certain individuals may have had higher status. These megalithic tombs are often located in prominent positions in the landscape, reinforcing the idea that they were built to assert territorial control and social power. The final beaker people's burials reflect their beliefs in an afterlife and importance of honoring the dead. The use of megalithic structures for the burials indicates a strong connection to the land and a desire to create lasting monuments to their ancestors. Burials often included tools, pottery, and food offerings, likely meant to aid the deceased in the afterlife. For this video, I gathered the raw DNA of eight funnel beakers from Scandinavia. I used my trade predictor tool for DNA analysis to generate trade and health reports for these eight individuals, and links to all the relevant data will be found in the description of the video. The most common predicted phenotype was Mediterranean, with four samples out of eight scoring a Mediterranean phenotype. The most common predicted eye colors were green and brown, and no sample was predicted to have blue eyes, and no sample was predicted to have dark brown eyes. The most common predicted hair colors were black and dark brown, although lighter hair colors were also present. No sample scored light blonde or red hair. The most common skin color by far was olive, although a couple samples scored white, palest, and even light brown skin. Keep in mind that sample quality is a factor when it comes to these predictions, as missing certain key SNPs can affect the result. A and S003 and Sorsum are low quality samples. The most common hair texture was wavy, but straight, curly, and even kinky hair was also present. Almost every sample except one was predicted to have a Greek-shaped nose. Two out of the eight samples were predicted to have a warrior, and one sample was predicted to have a warrior phenotype. No samples were predicted to have higher availability of D2 receptor sites, and five out of eight samples were predicted to have reduced D2 availability, leading to lower risk of schizophrenia and bipolar, and higher perplexity for no-go learning. No samples scored higher odds for bipolar type 1, and 3 samples scored lower odds for this condition. The samples had a pretty significant predisposition to autism, with 5 samples scoring high odds for autism, and only 1 sample scoring lower odds of autism. One sample carried the European MCM6 variant for lactase persistence, and the rest didn't. The samples had a strong predisposition to a higher level of empathy, with four samples scoring high level of empathy, and only two samples scoring lower level of empathy. The samples had a predisposition to average odds of cardiovascular issues, with seven samples scoring average odds, and one sample scoring lower odds of cardiovascular issues. Five out 
out of the eight samples scored lower odds of epithelial cancers and three samples scored higher odds of epithelial cancers. Their predisposition to autoimmune disease was also pretty typical. Six samples out of eight scored lower odds of autoimmune disease and one sample scored highest odds. One sample scored higher than average odds. They did not show a predisposition to multiple sclerosis, which is a condition most prevalent in Northern Europeans today, and no sample scored higher odds for MS. Two samples showed a high predisposition to type 1 diabetes. This condition is common in modern Northern Europeans, but this level of predisposition is significantly lower than what I've previously observed in other European samples. Two samples also showed a high predisposition to type 2 diabetes. The final weaker's predisposition to type 2 diabetes is overall consistent with what I've previously observed with European samples. Four of the eight samples did not carry any risk evidence for any rare conditions. Two out of eight samples carried risk evidence for Reifenstein's. Two out of eight samples carried risk evidence for familiar to aortic aortic aneurysm and dissection. Two samples were strongly predisposed to male pattern hair loss. One sample was strongly predisposed to glioma, which is brain cancer. Three out of eight samples were predisposed to Alzheimer's. Three out of eight samples carried risk evidence for atrial fibrillation. Most of the samples who were genotyped in the Kitoji region had homozygous risk haplotype for testicular cancer. Seven out of eight samples had intermediate odds of obesity and one sample had low odds of obesity. One sample had high odds of syncope and three samples had low odds of syncope. Every sample had elevated predicted hemoglobin levels. Four samples had higher levels of vitamin D and three samples had lower level vitamin D levels. No sample had extremely high iron level and it is unlikely that any of these samples suffered from hemochromatosis. Five of the eight samples were predicted to have shorter telomeres, which predisposes them to shorter lifespans. Uh, five of the samples were predicted to belong to blood group A and three samples were predicted to belong to blood group O. Thank you for watching until the end. Don't forget to like and share. Check out the description of the video once again and goodbye.